Now after getting some good practice of the Z790 system on LN2 with the Core i9-1300K, it's time to test the lower core count model on LN2 as well, so the 13600K. Usually these cheaper models aren't competed as heavily as the flagship models, so we could actually have a bit better success towards the end with the 13600K, but it obviously depends on like how well can the CPU perform on LN2, like first of all can it even hit full pot temperatures, as many of these CPUs cannot really do it, and usually the settings inside the BAOS will not even help you at all. So let's hope for the best, let's hope that the CPU can do full pot temperatures easily and with a very strong like cold poop black temperature, and then let's see how well can the CPU actually scale from the cold temperatures. So both of these CPUs did roughly the same on water, so 5.8 GHz for the P cores in Citibench R20, and I'm actually going to try the P cores only first, because that will determine how good your CPU actually is. If the P cores aren't strong enough, you don't even need to test the Atom cores, because the Atom cores don't really uh, matter that much towards the end. Even if the Atom cores are absolutely awesome, like 6.2 GHz on LN2 for the 1300K, if the P cores are too far behind, you cannot challenge the top scores in the various tests. So the P cores need to be good enough, and of course, as this CPU can be competed in two different core count categories, we need the P cores to be damn awesome. So let's hope for the best, let's see what happens. So I'm using the very same system once again as with the 1300K, so the EVGA Z790 Dark Kimpin engineering sample version without any heatsink at all on the uh, VRM, but it's not really necessary, and a small heatsink on the chipset over there. The very same SK Hynix ADI based memories, the ones that did up to like DDR5 8800 with no heatsink at all, etc. in tests like Geekbench 3. And Galax 710 GT, the Fish GPU, just to display the monitor signal with the capture card, of course, and Superflower Leadx 8 pack 2000 watt power supply. But yeah, let's hope for the best, let's see what happens, and I'm obviously using the uh, Inferno backplate as well, and the latest revision of the Kimping Cooling T-Rex container and KPX thermal paste. So yeah, I'll, I'll start cooling down and I'll meet you again inside the operating system. Okay, so far seems to be running full pot. The load on the Core i5 is easier, so usually it's just like idle, minus 193, load minus 191. So uh, currently at 7.3 for the P cores and cache at 6.3. But again, the cache isn't so important for the maximum performance. That's only like a, sm like a small plus if your cores themselves are particularly good. AAA2. Okay. No idea what's the maximum like performance or result. Sadly, my performance is not very good at the moment. So you need 7.8. That's damn high. Okay, so uh, don't know if I can go much further than this, so 7.4 GHz in Citibench R20, we are like 400 points away from the top score made by High Cookie from Gigabyte at 7.8. 7.8 is a tremendous frequency for any Raptor Lake CPU. These seem to go pretty hand in hand with the water cooling results. Each CPU 5.8 P cores on water at 1.35 volts each one doing 7.4 to 7.5 so yeah you definitely need higher at least 5.9 water for the PCOS to be able to get like absolutely golden results on LN2 so now one more attempt now I'm actually not using LN2 mode 
as I had some weird issues with it, I disable it. And we shut down. Interesting. But okay, that might be the only uh, record score I'm getting this time around with the 13600K. So uh, the Geekbench free result of 101,755 points. The previous top score is by Splay from the United States at 99,500. At the same CPU frequency pretty much, so 7.4 on the P cores. So my main difference comes from the actual uh, memory. So. Uh, it seems that the Hynix ADI can reach much higher memory frequency than on the Z690 Aqua OC. The Z790 based motherboards are generally better on the memory compared to the Z690 ones. So uh, yeah, memory score of 16,659. 5.8 on the Atom cores and 7.4 on uh, the P cores. So pretty awesome. And cache at 6.3. Okay, so that's the new uh, rank 1 score in GPU Pi in, in 14 core category, although very barely. So uh, I got a score of 53.649 or 643 and the previous top score by Splave is at 53.659. So the gain is extremely small as you can see. The Atom cores seem to be absolutely awesome on this CPU. So. They are running at 5.9 and the uh, P cores were running at uh, 7.5. In uh, Splave's run he used 7.6 on the P cores and 5.6 on the add-on. So at the start of this video I was actually uh, a bit uh, uh, incorrect. So uh, the add-on cores can make a difference when the uh, P cores are being very close to each other. So even 100 megahertz difference on the P cores can be overcome with higher atom cores. So pretty awesome. So along with the Geekbench 3, this is the new top score in uh, GPU Pi and with the 13600K or KF. Could try one more time, just out of interest, like is even 6 gigahertz possible on the atom? Okay, so this test is definitely a bit random. So now I had a proper gain, so pretty weird. But yeah, 53 ish, like spot on. 53.06 at 7.6 gigahertz P cores. And Atom at 5.9. So yeah, pretty awesome if you ask me. Okay, pretty interesting. So I got the rank 2 score in Citibench R20 in the 14 core category at 7.3 at Safe Clocks and 5.7 on the Atom. The previous rank 2 score was by Splave at 7.42 on the uh, P cores, but less on the Atom, I would think. The rank 1 is by High Cookie from Gigabyte with a tremendous CPU, so that's definitely out of reach, sadly. But this is already very good. I was expecting much lower result. Okay, Cinebench R23 at 7.3 ish. Oh well, there seems to be a bit of AVX, so uh, the negative offset of 1 is kicking in. But yeah, 5.7 to 5.8 on the Atom, 7.2 to 7.3 on the P cores. It's a sort of fun. Okay, that's the Geekbench 4 top score in the 14 core category. Very easy top score. 92,139 points. The previous top score by Splay, but hot, hot, actually uh, 100 megahertz higher P cores and only 88,172 points. So, uh, very awesome gain, even with lower clock speed. Now this Y Cruncher score is actually pretty interesting. So we are getting close to the uh, top score made on the X299 platform. The X299 platform definitely gains from the AVX512 instruction sets as well as from the quad channel memory. If we had AVX512 on this CPU, we would have got 
the top score anyway. So 18.243, I think the current rank one score is at like 16.9. Pretty interesting. So yeah, that's the rank 4 score in Y Cruncher in the 14 core category, 18.065 sec seconds. The rank 1 score is at like roughly 16.9 seconds made by Miller or Killer or however you want to pronounce his name on hardware. But on the X299 platform, as it gains so much from the AVX512 instruction sets as well as from the quad channel memory. If we had AVX512 on this CPU, we would have nailed the top score easily, even without quad channel memory. Okay, so the 13600K tests went a tiny bit better compared to my 1300K runs, so I got a pretty nice new rank 1 score in Geekbench 3 in the 14 core category. The same story for GPU Pi as well. I got the score twice actually, and then Geekbench 4 as well with a nice margin over the previous rank 1 score made by Splay from the United States. And then a few decent rank 2 scores like in Citibench R15 and R11.5. X2654K I didn't try to run at all as it's pretty long benchmark overall so I didn't want to waste any excess LN2 as this CPU cannot hit the top scores anyways. So I didn't get any competitive score in the 6 core category as uh, this CPU just cannot hit high enough clock speeds on the P cores. The maximum frequency for the P cores was somewhere around like 7.3 to 7.4 in the vast majority of tests, 7.4 to 7.5 in some tests like Geekbench and GPU Pi 1 billion could go up to like 7.6. And the target is absolutely insane. So we are looking for something like 7.7 .7 to 7.8 for the Pico. So that's insane target. So you need to find a CPU that can do at least 5.9 on water for the Pico's with weak of like 1.35 volts or so. So 5.8 isn't going to be enough. So I think 5.8 is something like average maybe. So I need to keep looking. We'll see if I can find a better one, but yeah, that's pretty much it. So the CPU is definitely maxed. The only like real surprise of this CPU was the pretty awesome Atom core. So I could go up to like 5.8 to 5.9 in some tests like GPU Pi 1 billion. I could run even a bit above 5.9 for the Atom cores with only 1.35 volts. So that's pretty awesome result if you ask me. But yeah, that's pretty much it. So all of these scores will be uploaded to hardwarebot.org. So definitely check them out if you are interested in them. And give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And check out my Patreon page as well if you want to support my work. But yeah, thanks for watching one of my videos once again. And I will see you on the next one.